All right, everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about NASA, which I think for us is pretty pertinent, seeing as we get to see what they do, you know, year round. Every now and then we see those rockets go up, and uh, to us, seeing it all the time, it might be a little less special than someone coming from like Massachusetts or something. But it's still nonetheless an amazing feat of uh, mankind to get people up into space. Um, I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, why do you care about NASA? Why should we fund it? Right? Like we've got so many problems here on Earth. Let's focus on these problems. They don't need that money. And especially in times when maybe budgets get cut. And uh, I think that's maybe just coming from a, a position of naivety where they don't really understand exactly what NASA does. So as you can see, this is a, this is a graph of NASA's budget over time. Uh, this spike right here is during the moon missions, when, and that's percentage of budget. So out of 100%, even at the max of what they were getting was only 5.5. And today, we're down below 1% of the budget. So for every dollar spent, they're getting less than a penny of funding. So the USA budget in 2014, so these are some really recent statistics, NASA received $17.7 billion. The Defense Department, you know, blowing stuff up, $526 billion. That's not really helping humanity, but, you know, the CIA, $48.2 billion, double what NASA gets. Uh, DHS stands for Department of Homeland Security. And uh, as far as education and the Department of Housing and Urban Development, that's over $100 billion together. So pretty much everyone is getting a lot more funding than NASA. And I'm not saying that NASA deserves as much funding as them, but out of $3.04 trillion, I think we can spare a little more than $17.7 billion. So again, just to sum it up for you, 0.48% of a penny <laughs> for every dollar. And I like this picture because it really kind of illustrates it. Would you say there's a difference between these two dollars? I mean, they look pretty much identical, but this top one here, has had the amount shaved off of what NASA gets. Basically, the 0.48% of its total length has been shaved off. So, I don't like space. I don't care about rockets. Why should I care? Well, that's why you should care. <laughs> Asteroids. Uh, this is actually a parking lot with cars, which you can barely see. This is in Arizona. Uh, this is the Beringer Crater. The force of the impact of that asteroid was 150 times the force of the Hiroshima bomb. So if that were to hit us today, the entire planet would probably be covered in dust and we'd probably enter an ice age and the majority of us would die. <laughs> and if that wasn't big enough for you, here's one in Canada that wasn't even discovered till 1943, which shows how much we know about our own planet. Uh, this is 2.2 miles across, it's 1,300 feet deep, and uh, the explosion occurred when, that, when the uh, asteroid impacted that was 8,500 Hiroshima bombs. So these are all in our solar system floating around, and we're just spinning out there, and the only people that keep track of it are NASA. So, I'm going to a little fun fact. This lake here is some of the purest fresh water in the world. The uh, amount of salt per billion, uh, points per billion, when they measure molecules, is only three. So three salt molecules per million water molecules, which uh, the Great Lakes and Michigan is 500 parts per million, so that's really pure water. So as I was saying, near-Earth objects, uh, this, they keep track of it and update the website almost every week. So as of last week, they found 11,705 near-Earth objects, and 1,512 of them have been classified as potentially hazardous. And what that means is, is their orbit uh, comes close enough to our planet that if it gets any closer, it's going to be sucked into our gravitational field, which means on the next year, the next pass around, it's going to hit us. Uh, <laughs> so without NASA, we wouldn't even know about this stuff. And I'm sure you guys know what happened to the dinosaurs, and so I would say NASA deserves a little funding. And this happened just, I think, two years ago, and this was a near-Earth object that actually came in between the Earth and the Moon orbit. So it's not like this rare occurrence that only happens every million years. It's a very pertinent threat to our species survival, really. So maybe that was a little too serious. <laughs> Uh, but NASA does a lot of cool things too. They get funding and they like to work on a lot of high-tech stuff that maybe we don't care about. And part of it being a government agency is they can fund stuff that maybe might be considered risky that a corporation wouldn't. And because of that, they've come up with tons of cool stuff that we use every day, like scratch-resistant lenses, memory foam, and they came up with Tom Cruise. Uh, not really, that's his braces. <laughs> what allows for invisible braces is a ceramic uh, technology that they discovered. So, And modern water filters, which is... Uh, silver ion activated charcoal, which before then, you know, water wasn't getting purified as well. So what does the opposition say? 
We've kind of covered two of them. We spent too much on NASA. I think you would agree that half a penny isn't too much. I would hope so, at least. And uh, we have too many problems on Earth focused down here. Well, the problem is, like I said, when you're looking down here, that's when the asteroid hits you in the back, and you go down. So, and the third argument is private corporations do it better. And uh, this is one that I think has a little bit of merit, but not for all things. I don't think very many private corporations are going to spend a lot of money tracking asteroids because it's not profitable. Um, but some things I think they do do better, uh, like launch modules and capsules. So uh, if we were to maybe say as a country we want to trim the budget, I would say maybe, I wouldn't say take money away from space, but maybe give it to private corporations, maybe they'll do it better. Uh, currently, there's 10 companies that are actually operating and designing capsule systems like this, and there's seven that are making rockets like this. The one that blew up, I think, last month in Virginia, I don't know if anyone saw it, but that was a private corporation rocket, so you know, it's not a good example. But. And this is SpaceX, who are operating out of uh, Cape Canaveral, so it's good for us. NASA gets funding, they get funding, we get jobs. So, what is NASA going to do in the future? Right now, uh, they're really only operating in lower Earth orbit, which is about a couple hundred miles up. And uh, when they initially started funding NASA in 1958, they said that they're there to push the space frontier. And unfortunately, in the last couple decades, we've been stagnant, and we're not really going further. We're just kind of staying up there where the space station is. And uh, there was a plan to go to Mars in 2030, and then that got scrapped a couple years ago. But if they receive proper funding, it's something that we could still do. And, uh, a lot of billionaires, kind of like Batman, Elon Musk, he's like the real life Tony Stark. Uh, <laughs> uh, he wants to go to the moon by, tw by 2030, or to Mars, I'm sorry, and he said he'll fund it, but that's a possibility. And of course, larger space stations, I've heard of uh, space station hotels, like uh, with Richard Bronson, Virgin Galactic, he's saying that might be something we could do. So, in the end, I mean, we have a really lovely planet. But a quote from a Russian scientist is, uh, the Earth is the cradle of humankind, but you're not supposed to live in the cradle forever. So that's how I'd like to close it.